many people search for Jesus and think that they found him. But in the end, they're going to realize one thing. They didn't find him, find him, find him, find him. Many people search for the truth and never find it. But if you want to know the truth about God, what we got to do, we got to be the Holy Ghost. Good afternoon and welcome to the Word of Truth, the program that's designed to help you understand your Bibles. My name is Brother Obadiah, and I'll be your teacher today, and reading for me will be Brother Benaiah. And today's lesson that we're going to deal with is Thou Shall Not Covet. Now, this, this, this lesson here is about one of the commandments, one of the Ten Commandments which the Lord commanded the people. And this commandment here was, was one where you did not have to physically do anything. This was, this was a commandment that starts in your mind. When you covet after something or somebody, it is something that starts inside your mind. Because God in all his wisdom knew that if you covet something or somebody in your mind, then it will move you to physically take the actions to do it. And we're going to see in this lesson how important it is that you understand that you are not a covetous person because the scripture is going to show you that if you're a covetous person, hey, it's a good chance you're not going to get into the kingdom of God. But we're going to start this off at Exodus 20 and we're going to pick it up at verse 17. Exodus 20 and we're going to pick it up at verse 17. When you get it, go ahead. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. He says, so don't covet anything that is your neighbor's. Because if you covet something that belongs to your neighbor, it will cause you to steal it. It will even cause you to kill your neighbor to, 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 uh, to take possession of it. And it will cause you to commit adultery with your neighbor's spouse if you covet after them. And we're going to look at some of these things in the scriptures. We're going to see that indeed when you covet after something that belongs to somebody else and, you, and, 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 and that, uh, that, that covetousness is conceived, it moves you to sin. Let's go to Matthew 5 and we're going to pick it up at verse 27. Matthew 5 and we're going to pick it up at verse 27. And we're going to see what the Lord is going to say here about committing adultery and we're going to see that indeed this covetousness when you covet this is something that starts internally this is something that starts in your mind see people don't understand that it ain't just about knowledge it's also about this inward man that's why uh, the book talks about hey the inward man being renewed day by day this is why the Lord had Paul say hey uh, uh, be renewed in the spirit of your mind because this is where righteousness and wickedness starts. It starts, as what's, it starts with what's on the inside. And if you covet, then you have this, this sin brewing inside of you, and it causes your actions to go against God. Matthew 5, and let's pick it up at verse 27. Matthew 5 and 27, go ahead. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Now, he said, look, you have heard it has been said of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. And we know what that is. But that is a physical act, right? Mm -hmm. You physically go and you go lay with some other man's wife or a woman goes and she lays down with some, some other woman's husband. You know what it is. Mm -hmm. But it is a physical act. He said, so you heard it has been said, thou shalt not commit adultery. But watch what he's going to say here. Go ahead. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed. Wait, wait, wait. He said, whosoever look on a woman to do what? To lust to after lust her. To lust after her. In other words, he coveted this woman. Mm -hmm. And we're going to show you that lust and covetousness is the same thing in this next scripture. But he said, whosoever look on a woman to lust after her in his heart. That means he didn't touch her physically. That means he didn't go commit the physical act of adultery, but he was, he was committing adultery in his mind. Go ahead. Hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. He said, look, if he just look on a woman and lust after her, which is to covet, he said he have committed adultery already in his heart. This is on the inside. Let's go to uh, Romans 7, and we're going to pick it up at verse 7. We're going to show you that lust and covetousness is the same thing. When you covet something, you lusting after it. 
when you covet somebody else, you are lusting after them. And we just going to let the scriptures tell you that those two words are interchangeable. It's the same thing. So he said, hey, you heard it been said you can't commit adultery. He said, but even if you lust after her in your heart, you have uh, uh, you have already committed adultery in your heart. Romans seven. And we're going to pick it up at verse seven. Go ahead. What shall we say then is the law sin? God forbid. He said, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? He says, God forbid. Go ahead. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law. He said, look, I had not known sin but by the law. Because the scriptures tell you that sin is a transgression of the law. So only way you can know what sin is, is if there's a law that's present to tell you that. Go ahead. For I had not known lust. He said, I had not known lust. Go ahead. Except the law had said. Thou shalt not covet. He, see, now he's saying, I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. Because they are one and the same. That's why the Lord said, hey, it hasn't been said, thou shalt not commit adultery. But if you look upon a woman and lust after her, he says, you have committed adultery in your heart. Because when the Lord commanded them not to covet anything that belongs to their neighbor, he was let he was preparing them to 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 continue on in righteousness. He he was giving them what they needed. You can't even do it in your mind. That sin and all of that stuff shouldn't even be stirred up in your mind. You shouldn't be plotting all these wicked things in your mind because if you do this, then you're going to carry it out in your actions. But if you don't covet, then you got a better chance of not doing the things that the Lord tells you not to do. Now, let's go to James 1 and pick it up at verse 12 because Paul said, hey, I had not known lust except for the law hath said, thou shall not covet. So we understand that these are the, it's the same thing. Lust and when you covet, those are the same things. And what does, what does lust cause you to do? When you feel with lust for something, you'll do anything to get it. Yes, sir. It ain't no, ain't no boundaries. You'll do whatever, mm -hmm. which means you're going to sin against God. And we're going gonna to show you some examples. We're going to show you some examples. James 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 12. James 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Go ahead. Blessed is a man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Uh -huh. Let no man say when he was when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. See, all of us have things we lust after. All of us have a degree of covetousness in us. The thing is, you have to work to get rid of that. You have to work not to be one who is a covetous person or a person walking around just filled with lust 24 seven, because this is not good. If you are trying to be a servant of God and get eternal life, yes, sir. this is against you and, it, and yes, it's sir. not going to help you one bit. But he said, look, the Lord ain't tempting you. He said that every man is tempted when he is drawn away of, of his own lust and enticed. So if something you don't lust after something, it could sit in your face for 100 years and you ain't going to touch it because you don't lust after it. But the thing you do lust after, if it's in front of you, you probably going to go and try to get it. Mm. So you enticed by your own lust. So you need to figure out what is it that you lust after. We have to understand the moments that we are lusting or we are being covetous and we don't even realize it. Because those are the moments where you are weakest and those are the moments where you are falling into sin. Go ahead. Then, when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And this is the problem with lust. When it is, when it is conceived, it bringeth forth sin. That's why the Lord told you don't covet mm -hmm. nothing that belongs to your neighbor. Why? Because when it is conceived, the only thing that it brings forth is sin. Go ahead. And sin, when it is finished. Bring it forth to death. He said, and when sin, when it is finished, it bring it forth death because that is the wages of sin. That is a principle that you cannot get around. That is the order of God. The wages yes, of sin is death. The wages of sin ain't life. It is death. death. And that don't change. No, 
No, sir. He say, but when lust is conceived, when or when covetousness is conceived, he said it bringeth forth sin, and sin bring forth death. Let's look at this. Let's go to Numbers 11, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Numbers 11, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1 because we're going to look at this. Because a lot of times we walk around lusting after things that really not going to do us no good. They might feel good to the flesh, but they're going to bring you down in the end. People don't understand why we keep going through the same circles over and over again. It's because you lusting and you actually destroying yourself yes, sir. slowly. Because you lust and you lust and the world teach you to lust after everything you want. They teach you to lust after. So you never happy. You never content because you always feel with lust. You always feel with, the, with, with, with covetousness. And you got to have it. I got to get it. So you ain't never happy. You never satisfied. You never had peace. And it drives you crazy. But this is the world that we live in. But the Lord told you don't do this. Do not covet. Anything that belongs to your neighbor, and you shouldn't lust after anything that is against God, definitely. Because this it, it leads to sin, and sin, when it is finished, it brings forth death. But we're going to look at Israel, and we're going to see how they started to lust and covet. Let's go to Numbers 11, and we're going to um, pick it up in verse 1. Go ahead. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it. And his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. Now, this seems, this, this seems like, man, the Lord, Lord was really, uh, he was really rough. But the thing is, the people were complaining because they were filled with lust. Yes, sir. And, this, and it, it's going to let you know as we read on, this is, this is what happens. A per, you always complaining. You know why you never content? Because lust burns it don't burn out it just keep burning yes, sir. and you got to have more and once you get more then i got to get some more, more. and i got to get some more and it don't stop and you will drive yourself crazy and you will never be happy but he but but the people here this is what they was doing it didn't matter what the lord did for them it wasn't never enough they still complain they still complain and this is a sign that you feel with covetousness or you feel with lust go ahead and the people cried unto Moses. And when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. Uh -huh. And he called the name of the place Tiberah, because the fire of the Lord burnt among them. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. See, now the mixed multitude, now these, these were not only Israel, but these were the people who came out with them. The people of these other nations. Why? Because they fell into the same thing. He said, so now in the mixed multitude, that was among them fell a lusting. So now they feel with lust. Go ahead. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, who shall give us flesh to eat? Now here it is. They lusting after some food. They lusting after to get the, uh, uh, their bellies full. Who, who going to give us meat? It don't matter that you was just a slave for 430 years. Mm -hmm. You out in that hot sun. You know, uh, 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 making making brick with no straw and getting uh, flogged and getting everything under the sun done till you get mistreated. You a slave, but only thing you could think of is how come I ain't got no meat? Mm. Again, they went a lusting. When lust conceived, you don't think straight. Mm -mm. You not, you not in a in, in in a sound state of mind because you are filled with lust or you feel with covetousness. Now he said, now they went a they. They went uh, a lusting, and now the children of Israel, they start crying about who going to give us some flesh. Go ahead. We remember the fish, which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. It sounds so good. But what they should have been doing was thanking God that they got delivered. Yes, sir. Go ahead. But now our soul is dried away. There's nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. Now... Now, the food that the Lord gave to them, which was manna, they just, they just treated that like it was garbage. Mm. They said, oh, man, I sold dry. There ain't nothing here but this manna. Mm. You know why? Because they were covetous. They were lusting. 
They couldn't see that they had been delivered from bondage. And then the Lord rained manna down from heaven. They was eating. It wasn't like they were starving. But this is what happens when you in that state of mind, when you start to covet, when you when, when you just got when you feel with lust, you don't even appreciate the things that the Lord have done for you. You don't appreciate the things that you have. You don't appreciate the fact that you got a car. Mm -hmm. You got a Chevy, but you crying because you want a Lexus. Mm. Why? You still driving where you got to go. Yes, sir. You got a roof over your head. You got a refrigerator. You got hot running water. You got a soft bed to lay on. You got everything. You got a job. Okay, you may not have millions, but you have everything you need. Yes, sir. But when you are filled with this, which is lust, or when you are a covetous person, you don't appreciate none of that. And that's what happened. They said, man, I sold dry and we ain't got nothing to eat but this manner. So in other words, it just wasn't good enough. So now the Lord, he going to fix them. Skip down to verse 18. Go ahead. And say thou unto the people, sanctify thyself yourselves against tomorrow, and ye shall eat flesh. For ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. It was well with you in Egypt, but you was a slave. Mm. Go ahead. Therefore, the Lord will give you flesh, and ye shall eat. Uh -huh. You should not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, neither ten days, nor twenty days, but even a whole month until it come out at your mouth, at so, your nostrils. So the Lord said, I'm going to fix you. Yeah, you're going to eat flesh. But you ain't going to eat it one day, and you ain't going to eat it five days, ten, or twenty. I'm going to make you eat it a whole month till it come out your nostrils. Because you lusting, this is, you born it this bad. So where you speaking against the one who delivered you, and everything, the things that he did for you, you counting them as nothing. So you want this, I'm going to give it to you. But I'm going to give it to you so bad that it's going to come out your nostrils. You ain't going to be able to handle it. Go ahead. And it be loathsome unto you. Because that ye have despised the Lord which is among you, and ye have and have wept before him, saying, Why came we forth out of Egypt? Now, skip down to verse uh, 31 and read. And there went forth a wind from the Lord, and brought quails from the sea, and let them fall by the camp. And it were a day's journey on this, as it were a day's journey on this side, and as it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, and as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. Uh huh. And the people stood up all that day. Now the people stood up all that day. Go ahead. And all that night. And all that night. Go ahead. And all the next day. And all the next day. They stayed up all that all that day, all through the night, and all the next day. Go ahead. And they gathered the quails. And they gathered these quails. You know why? They was filled with lust. They was just, they was just driven. They was just out of their mind. They, they stayed up all that day, all that night, all the next day gathering this quail. Because that's how bad, how much lust they were filled with because they wanted some meat. Go ahead. He that gathered, he that, he that gathered least gathered ten omers, and they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. Uh huh. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. And he smote them with a plague while they was eating it. Go ahead. And he called the name of the place Kibroth. Kibroth Hatava, because there they burned, they buried the people that lusted. He said, because there they buried the people that did what, brother? That lusted. When lust is conceived, it brings forth what? Death. Sin, and when sin is finished, it brings forth death. death. That lust was conceived. It was conceived to the point where they couldn't see that they had been delivered from bondage, and they couldn't see that the Lord had rained down this manna, something that had never been done, and they still couldn't see uh, what God had did for them because they were filled with this, with mm -hmm. this lust. And when it was conceived, it brought forth sin, and when sin is finished, it brings forth death. Mm -hmm. But they went about lusting for meat. Let's go to uh, Joshua 7, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Joshua 7 and verse 1. That's why Paul said, hey, wherever, whatever state he is in, he is content. Yes, sir. Whether he is in a state where he got a lot of money, you know, around tax season, 
<laughs> or whether he don't have a lot of money, which is probably for a lot of us the rest of the year. Yes, sir. But he said whatever state he's in, he's content. But you cannot be content, brothers and sisters, if you are a covetous person, because that lust will not let you rest. You going you gonna try to get any and everything, and if it's too, and if it's strong on you, you gonna do whatever you gotta do to get it. Mm -hmm. And that and, and and that if that means sinning against God, if that means doing something against your brother or sister to get it, you will do it. Mm -hmm. And we gonna see. Uh, Joshua seven. We gonna read verse one, and then we gonna skip. Joshua seven. Pick it up at verse one. Go ahead. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursing thing. A four, Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zibdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Now, when they went in Jericho to take the city, the Lord had let them know, don't take of the accursed thing. Don't take nothing, because it's accursed. But this man, he decided he was going to do it anyway. And what happened was they went up against a small city and they got smoked. They fled away and they couldn't figure out what was happening. They like, man, what's going on? And then the Lord told Joshua, hey, man, get up off your, you know, get up off your face. Israel done sinned. So then they had to figure out, man, who did this sin? Who did this? And we're going to find out that he did it because of covetousness of this lust. Skip down to verse 19. Go ahead. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done, and hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. Now he said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. Now, when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin, so he sinned. Go ahead. And thus, and thus have I done. Uh huh. And when I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment. Now he saw a piece of clothes. I want y'all to pay attention here. He said, when I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment. So this is some clothes, right? Go ahead. And 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. Now he's seeing some money. Like the Lord said, like the Lord had uh, 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 Solomon say, ain't nothing new under the sun. Hey, people do anything for some clothes and for some money. Yes, sir. They covet it. They lust after it, and they'll do anything to get it. For a little money and a few nice looking clothes. Mm. They'll do anything. It ain't nothing changed. He said, so I seen this Babylonian garment. I seen this silver and this gold. Go ahead. Then I coveted them. He, then he did what? He coveted them. He coveted them. In other words, he saw them and was like, man, I got to have this. He, he coveted them. He lusted after them. And what did it cause him to do? Sin against the Lord God of Israel. Because didn't he say, I have indeed sinned yes, against the Lord God of Israel? Because that's what happens. When lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. That's the principle. When lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. When sin is finished, it brings forth death. But he said, I coveted them. Go ahead. Then I coveted them. And took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent, and the silver under it. Now, skip down to verse 25. Go ahead. So he coveted this garment and that and the silver and gold that he saw, and it caused him to sin because the Lord commanded him not to take of the accursed thing. But he did it because he coveted it after he saw it, he coveted after it. Verse 25, go ahead. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire. And after they had stoned them with stones. Now, that's good. So what happened? Hey, he got stoned. And not only him, but his children, his whole house, and all, all his possessions got stoned. We skipped over that verse. But everything he had. Because the Lord told him, man, you got to get this accursed. You got to get the cursed thing from, from among you. You got to get it away from you. But. He sinned because he covered it after this garment and, and the silver and gold that he saw. And that's what happens when lust is conceived. It brings forth sin. You can't be a servant of God and you got 
this lust or this covetousness in your heart because it will cause you to sin in order to fulfill that lust or fulfill the things that you covet after. Now, let's go to uh, 1 Kings 21, and we're going to pick it up in verse 1. 1 Kings 21, and we're going to pick it up in verse 1 because we're going to see about King Ahab, who was king uh, in Samaria, which is the ten tribes. When, it, when the nation of Israel split, you had ten tribes go one way, two tribes uh, uh, went under the name of Judah. But Ahab was king over the ten tribes, and he was wicked. The Lord say he was wicked. Now, we're going to see what happens with him when he, want, when he when it's something he wanted and he couldn't have it. We're going to see what happens. 1 Kings 21, and pick it up at verse 1. 1 Kings 21 and verse 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass after these things that, the, that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, hard by the place of Ahab, king of Samaria. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or, if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth, the worth of it in money. Uh -huh. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me, that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to. Now it said he was heavy and displeased. So this hurt him. Go ahead. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. Now watch what he's going to do. Go ahead. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. Now... He wanted this real bad because he was that upset. Now, this is the king. Mm -hmm. He had vineyards. Like he said, I give you another vineyard that's better than this one. He had the money to pay him. He could have did. He could have went and bought him 10 other vineyards probably. Mm -hmm. But he wanted this one that bad. And it hurt him that bad where he rolled over like a little kid <laughs> and turned his back and wouldn't even eat for a vineyard. You got to pay attention. So now he, he didn't want to eat. He didn't want to do nothing. Go ahead. Verse 5. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? Go ahead. And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite and said unto him, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread. Let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. Because his wife was just as wicked as he was. Yes, sir. And so she said, hey, you the king, right? She said, be merry and get up and eat. I get it for you. Go ahead. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city dwelling with Naboth. Uh -huh. And she wrote the, in the letters saying, Proclaim a fast and set Naboth on high among the people and set two men, sons of Belial, before him to bear witness against him saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. Now pay attention. She sent these letters and put the king's seal on it. She wrote them in his name, put his seal on it to the, to the, to the elders and people of the city. And she said, look, you proclaim a fast, you set Naboth on high, and then you bring sons of Belial, which is foolishness. You bring these sons of Belial before him, and they're going to bear witness against him. And they're going to say he blasphemed and all of that, and then y'all going to stone him. So now you're going to have people lie against this man, and then you're going to have them kill. So because her husband, he wanted this vineyard that bad, now you're going to lie and kill to get it. Skip down to, uh, skip down to uh, uh, verse 17. Go ahead. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah, the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which he is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, 
whether he is going down to possess it. Because if you kept reading, that's exactly what happened. They stoned Naboth. The plan went through, and Naboth was, was, was stoned all over this vineyard that the king of Israel wanted. Mm -hmm. he, was, he wanted it so bad, he was sick when he couldn't get it. So they killed Nabal. They lied on him. They had some, some sons of Belial, which means, you know, sons of, of foolishness, come lie on the man and then had the man killed. Go ahead. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou killed and also taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, In a place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick thy blood even thine. Now pay attention to what he's going to tell Ahab what he did. Verse 20. Go ahead. And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Thou hast done what? Sold thyself to work evil. He said evil. thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord, like people sell themselves today. Yes, sir. To work evil in the sight of the Lord. Mm. Same thing. Same thing. You selling your soul. You selling yourself. It don't matter. Long as I get what I want. Mm. You and you gonna do evil in the sight of the Lord. He say you done sold yourself to do evil in the sight of the Lord, but pay attention. They lied on the man and then killed him. But that's why the Lord tell you, you don't covet nothing that belongs to your neighbor, because if you do, you will lie on him to get it. Yes, sir. You will kill him to take possession of it. Yes, sir. You will steal it from him. Yes, sir. This is what happens when you covet something that belongs to your neighbor and it don't belong to you. If you covet after it, it will cause you to do those things. And that's what happened to Nabal. Ahab sold himself. He knew what his wife was doing. Mm -hmm. And they set the man up. They lied on him and then they stoned him. And then he went and took the man's vineyard knowing he couldn't have it. All of that because you coveted or lusted after this man's vineyard to the point where it made you sick and you didn't even want to eat. We got to pay attention because this is how you fall into a trap. Let's go to uh, James 4 and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. James 4 and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. James 4 and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Now here he's talking to the church. He say, look, uh, whence come wars and fightings and fighting among you? Go ahead. Come they not hence, even of your lusts that war in your members. He said, now come, uh, come and not, uh, come and not hence, even of your lust that war in your members. Go ahead. Ye lust and have not. He said, you lust and have not. That's a, that's a bad feeling. When you lust after something and you want it so bad and it seems like no matter what you do, you just can't, you just can't get it. It drives you mad. He say, so you lust, but you don't, you have not. Go ahead. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. He said, look, you kill and desire to have and still you cannot obtain. This is what happened with Ahab. He killed Nabal because he had to have that vineyard. It didn't matter how many vineyards he had being the king. He had to have Naboth's vineyard. So he had to, he, he lied on the man and he killed him just to get it. So James is saying, what, 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 you know, where do all these, this fighting and war come along among y'all? Why y'all doing that? He said, because it's the lust that dwell in your members. We don't realize. How is it that we are all Serving the same God, we all supposed to be walking in the spirit of God, but every time we come together, it, it ain't nothing but a bunch of fighting, bickering, and a whole lot of confusion. Why? Why is that? Because we ain't worried about the agenda of God. Everybody worried about their own agenda. Mm -hmm. Everybody is covetous. Mm -hmm. They coveting or they lusting after what they want to have happen. Mm -hmm. So you don't have... You, you don't have peace. You just have you just have strife. And that's what he's telling them, because it is lust that warn your members. He said you lust and you don't even you lust and have not. You kill and desire to have. He said, but you still can't obtain it. 
Go ahead. Ye fight and war. You fight and war. Go ahead. Yet ye have not. Yet you have not. Go ahead. Because ye ask not. He said because you ask not. Because we too busy trying to take. Mm -hmm. When you lust or when you feel with covetousness, you, on, you ain't got the mind to ask. You take it. Because that's how you driven. I'm just going to take what I want. I got to have it, so I'm just going to do whatever to do, and I'm going to take it. He said, but you don't even ask for it. Go ahead. You ask and receive not. He said, then you ask and receive not. People don't understand why I'm asking God for something and I ain't getting it. He's going to tell you. Go ahead. Because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. He said, you ask amiss, which means in the wrong, in a, in a, uh, uh, you ask for the wrong reasons. When you ask amiss, it's for the wrong purpose. It's for the wrong reason. He said you ask an amiss so you can consume it upon your lust just like the people when they ask for meat. They ask for meat so they can consume it upon their lust. And if you ask amiss, you probably won't get it. He said so that's why it ain't happening. All you want to do is consume it upon your lust. You ain't asking the Lord for something because you actually need it. You just feel with lust. And these false prophets ain't telling you that. They want you to lust. Yes, sir. Because they know you ain't in your right mind. When you feel with lust and when you feel with this covetousness, you ain't in your right mind. And they know they can keep suckering you in mm -hmm. because you don't even know what, what kind of mind frame you in. Yes, sir. Uh, go ahead. Four. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world of that the friendship of the world is in is enmity with God. Uh -huh. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Uh -huh. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? He say, look, do you think the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? We gotta realize that hey. The spirit of dwelling, dwelling in us lusteth to envy. If you don't understand this, then you don't know what spirit you're dealing with half the time. But the scriptures is letting us know. It's the, Lord, it's the Lord showed you in so many ways what this does. This is why this is one of the ten commandments. This is one of the ten. Thou shalt not covet. Mm -hmm. It's there for a reason. Because that's the gateway. If you start to covet, hey, you, you'll do all kind of sin and wrong in order to get the thing that you lusting after, because you ain't going to be able to rest until you get it. It's nothing wrong with trying to better yourself and, and take care of your family and do better if you have the opportunity. But when you start dealing with covetousness and lust, and it causes you to sin against God, then you way out of bounds. And the end of that is death. Let's go to... Uh, Philippians 3 and pick it up at verse 18. Philippians 3 and we're going to pick it up at verse 18. Philippians 3 and we're going to pick it up at verse 18. Uh, pick it up at verse 17. Go yes, ahead. Yes, sir. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so, as ye have us for an end sample. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. He said now, so, hey, you have an example from us. He said, but for many walk, he said, of whom I have told you before, even weeping, that now they the enemies of cross. So these are people who were walking and then they, they turn. They turn from Christ. He said now they're enemies of the cross. Let's see why. Go ahead. Whose end is destruction. Whose God is their belly. Whose God is what? Their belly. Whose God is their belly. In other words, they God is really about what they can get. Mm -hmm. That's they God. They're going to serve God according to how well they're doing in life. And if you a person that got to have everything go right, mm 
in order for you to serve God, then you're going to be in trouble. If times get hard and you just say, skip it, I ain't serving God no more, you're going to be in trouble. Your God can't be in your belly. That can't be your God. But he say, this is what happened to these people who are now enemies of the cross. Or if the Lord do bless you with some, with, with some blessings, that don't mean you get up and walk away. That don't mean, oh, I got what I need. I, I got enough money and everything. I don't need God no more. I'm gone. Because your God is your belly then. Mm. It's all about what you have and don't have, but it ain't about serving God. He says, so whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly. Go ahead. And whose glory is in their shame, whose mind, who mind earthly things. He said, who mind earthly things. How do you know a person is teaching you the true gospel of God? Because they ain't going to tell you to mind earthly things. Mm -hmm. 95% of their sermon ain't going to be about earthly things. Because you ain't supposed to be minding earthly things to that degree. Mm -hmm. They're going to be telling you about the kingdom of God and being a servant of God and keeping his commandments. Yes, sir. And calling on the name of Christ Jesus. That's what they're going to be telling you. Yes, sir. If you get some of them little earthly things, good. That is a blessing. But your whole purpose of coming to church... Your whole purpose of paying your tithe shouldn't be because you thinking that you're going to get some great abundance of earthly things. Because that ain't how it go. But the ones that lie to you and tell you that know they're lying to you and they know that you got the spirit of lust and covetous, and, and, and you have that coveted spirit on you and they know you're just going to keep handing over your money. You're going to keep handing it over because you believing that a million dollars is going to fall out the sky for you. But the person that's telling you that know better. But they're not telling you what you need for salvation. They want you to keep minding earthly things. Because if you start dealing with spiritual things, you're going to realize that these earthly things is not what I call on the name of the Lord for. I call on the name of the Lord so that I can obtain salvation. So that I can be cleared of my past sins. So that I can come under his grace and obtain eternal life. It ain't so he can give me all the earthly things I want. Let's go to uh, Luke 12 and pick it up at verse 13. Luke 12 and verse 13. Your God can't be your belly, brothers and sisters. It just can't be. Luke 12 and verse 13. Watch what the Lord is going to tell this man that comes to him. Luke 12 and we're going to pick it up at verse 13. Go ahead. And one of the company said unto him. Master, speak to my brother, that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? Now the man came to him and said, Lord, speak to my brother that, you know, uh, uh, that he divide the inheritance with me. He said, hey, he said, man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? The Lord ain't come specifically so he can uh, uh, help you get uh, uh, some <laughs> earthly inheritance and divide it up. He ain't no probate officer. He said, hey, man, I ain't, you know, who made me a divide over your things? Go ahead. And he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness. He said, take heed and beware of what? Covetousness. He letting them know. He said, hey, man, take heed and beware of covetousness. Go ahead. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. He said, a man's life don't consist of the abundance of the things which he possesses. He said, beware of covetousness. Beware of this. And if the Lord is telling you to beware, you should beware. You should be paying some real attention to this because your life don't consist of that. If your life is based on what you have and don't have, you're going to be in trouble. Let's go to Luke 8 and pick it up at verse 4. Luke 8 and verse 4. Luke 8 and we're going to pick it up at verse 4. Go ahead. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it, and some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. Uh -huh. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. Now, 
skip down to verse 14. Go ahead, because we want to deal with one specific uh, set of uh, seeds here. Verse 14, go ahead. And that which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. And this is what happens. He said, he told them that the, you know, the seed was the word of God. Mm -hmm. But the word of God can't spring forth and grow in you if you are choked with the cares of this world. Uh -huh. I ain't saying walk around and uh, be foolish and, and, and uh, spend all your rent and mortgage money and think that poof is going to get paid. But your whole life, your whole drive can't be about what you can have in this life and all and, and the possessions that you can get. It can't just be about that because the word of God cannot spring forth in you. He said, hey, they got choked with the cares of this world and, 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 and with cares of riches and pleasure to, uh, pleasures of this life. And they could not bring forth fruit unto, unto perfection. This is what happened. The word going to get choked out of you. What's going to happen is your guy going to end up being in your belly. Mm -hmm. Let's go to uh, 1 Timothy 6, and we're going to pick it up at verse 3. 1 Timothy 6, and we're going to pick it up at verse 3. First Timothy 6, and we're going to pick it up at verse 3. Go ahead. If any man teach otherwise... And consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the, do and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Uh -huh. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doubting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, uh -huh. perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such Withdraw thyself. So he's telling you about the one that's like this. Mm -hmm. And one of the characteristics of the people that are like this, they suppose that gain is godliness. Uh -huh. So you are holy based on the amount of money you have. That ain't it. But that ain't it. No, sir. He said from such withdraw yourself. But if we would understand and read and understand the scriptures, you would know. If all you telling me 95% of the time is about all of this gain and stuff I'm going to get, then you should question that individual. And you should withdraw yourself from listening to them because they ain't telling you the things that you need to get eternal life. Because they got to have some excuse for why they have all those things. So they're going to tell you that you're supposed to have this. Mm -hmm. And this is for you too. So you don't question where's mine when you got all of this, but I still ain't got it. But you've been telling me for years. So they don't want you to question. And they're going to keep feeding you that same line. And they're going to keep feeding you this same uh, 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 thing that's going to keep this spirit of lust on you. Or keep this covet, uh, 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 covetous mindset on you. Where you're just going to continue and continue and continue chasing after something that you... Uh, that you uh, 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 assuming that that equates with you being godly and it don't he said from such withdraw thyself go ahead but godliness with contentment is great gain. he said godliness with contentment is great gain not 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 a lot of money not a lot of houses and a lot of possessions. He said godliness with content is great gain if you have a lot of money or a lot of houses that is good but what he wants them to know is godliness with contentment is great gain. Go ahead. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Uh-huh. And having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. He said, let us be content with that. Hey, if you got enough food and you got, you got enough clothes and you got a place to stay, hey, you have to be content with that. You cannot rebel and speak against the Lord and, and start going off lusting and, 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 and being a covetous person because you think you should have uh, what somebody else has, you have to be content and you let the Lord bless you. Go ahead. But they that will be rich 
fall into temptations and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Which drown men in, uh, 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 which drown men in, 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 in destruction and all of that. Go ahead. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Uh huh. Which while some coveted after, he has have, that word again. Which while some did what? Coveted after. Which, which while which some who which coveted after? Go ahead. They have erred from the faith. You mean to tell me if you covet after this, it will cause you to err from the faith? Yes, sir. Y'all better understand. He said which some have coveted after, which means they didn't just you know try to get a better job. They didn't just go to school to try to make themselves more marketable. To make big income, they started to covet after it, which means they just they just did whatever they could to get it. It said they have erred from the faith. They turned from God. Go ahead. And pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Because this is what happens when you start to covet. This is why the Lord tell you don't do it. Let's go to. Uh, we're going to have to skip. Let's go to. Uh, uh, Let's go to 1 Peter 2 and pick it up at verse 11. 1 Peter, the second chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 11. 1 Peter 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 11. And you get it, brother? Read verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust. Which war against the soul. He said abstain from fleshly lust with which war against the soul. He said abstain from it. He didn't say run into it. He said abstain from fleshly lust. Excuse me. Because they war against the soul. Let's go to Galatians 5 and pick it up at verse 16. Galatians 5 and we going to pick it up at verse 16. Galatians 5 and we going to pick it up at verse 16. He said abstain from fleshly lust. That war against the soul. And he's we gonna we're gonna see why why it wars against the soul. Galatians five and sixteen. Go ahead. This say I then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. In order not to fulfill the lust of the flesh, you gotta walk in the spirit. Go ahead. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. See, this is why these fleshly lusts uh 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 they they war against the soul. Uh 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 because the flesh lusteth after the spirit, and the spirit after the flesh. Go ahead. And these are contrary the one to the other. And they are contrary, brothers and sisters. They ain't, they, they ain't brothers. They ain't, they ain't walking hand in hand. They are contrary. Either you going to try to walk in the spirit, or you going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's all to it. Go ahead. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. It don't say so you can do whatever you want. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. So that you cannot do the things that you would. Because they are contrary one to another. Go ahead. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Go ahead. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Uh-huh. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. All these things are against God, right? Yes, Idolatry, sir. witchcraft, uh, adultery, fornication, all of this. Hey, this is against the commandment of God. But that's what happened when you're dealing with the lust of the flesh, mm -hmm. when you covet. This is, it leads to all of this. Go ahead. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I also have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. He say, look, they that which do such things, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Not going to inherit it. But all of these things, when you start to walk in the flesh, when you start to fulfill the lust of the flesh and all of that, what's happening is you have let. Uh, 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 you have started to covet something or somebody or whatever it may be and you let it build up and then it burns until you just do anything to get it. You sell yourself, you sell out in the eyes of God because you want to fulfill the lust of the flesh. But this is not what we should be doing. Let's go to uh, Colossians 3. And we're going to pick it up at verse 5. 
Colossians 3. And we're going to pick it up at verse 5. When you get it, brother, go ahead. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. He said, mortify your members. Mortify means to kill, suppress. He said, your members which are upon the earth. Go ahead. Fornication, uncleanness, uh -huh. inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness. And who? Covetousness. Uh-huh. Which is idolatry. Oh. So covetousness is idolatry. Yes, sir. Hmm. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. And he's telling you all of these things. And then he said covetousness. He said which is idolatry. But you, you can't be dealing with idolatry. No, sir. Then the Lord tell you, uh, you worship him. You should worship, uh, worship no other gods before him. Should have no other gods before him. You shouldn't worship him. But that's what happens when you covet because you disregard the word of God and you sin to get the things that you are lusting after. Don't do this. Verse six. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Uh-huh. In the which ye also walked. That's Some good. So, hey, the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience because of this. Let's go to Galatians uh, 6, and we're going to pick it up at verse 7. Galatians 6, and we're going to pick it up at verse 7. Go ahead. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. He said, be not deceived. God is not mocked. We just, we just, we just read to you, hey, the wrath of God will come upon the children of disobedience for doing these things. The people that do these things not going to inherit the kingdom of God. He said, God is not mocked. Go ahead. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. He said, whatever a man soweth, that is what he is going to reap. Go ahead. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He said, he that soweth to the flesh of the flesh, he shall reap corruption. Go ahead. But he that soweth to the spirit, shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And the one that soweth to the spirit, they ain't going to reap everlasting life. But we just showed you uh, 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 the works of the flesh. And you just going to get corruption. And in the end, you're not going to get it to the kingdom of God. So that is my lesson, brothers and sisters. Thou shall not covet. I hope you understood the lesson. And uh, we thank you for tuning in with us on the word of truth. And we hope that you are tuning in next week. where we'll be bringing you another topic from the scriptures. As always, please read your Bibles and keep the commandments of God.